Hello! One of the things that makes me really excited is when hobbyists find they there's a problem there but they go out and they fix it themselves and they develop their own stuff and that's one of the things I want to cover today in this video. This is a product made by a guy called Flavio and he's done a piece of open hardware called the Ochin CM4 board. And if you don't know what that means, CM4 refers to this thing. This is a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. It's essentially a Raspberry Pi 4, but it's got all the ports of GPIO pins taken away, and hence it's much, much smaller. So what he's done is come up with a series of boards. This is the main one. This plugs into that CM4 uh, board and goes lots of breakout pins across the top there, and you mount it on this one. And then on top of it, you mount it on this one, where you can put a flight controller directly on top. And the idea is you end up with a, a lovely tight stack um, of components instead of having things everywhere. Now this isn't a commercially available product or anything, as I said it's a piece of open source hardware. If you go to his GitHub repository, link down below, you will find all the schematics to make this yourself if you want to. This is one of the prototype boards he's made up himself. If you are interested in getting hold of one of these boards, give him a shout and if enough people uh, basically are interested then what he can do is a group buy in and make up a bunch of boards or get a bunch of boards made up uh, and you know the more people that order it the price comes down which is a cool thing. Let's go to close up and I'll show you in detail how we connect all this up and why this is so different to a regular Raspberry Pi and how it all fits together. So just for a size comparison this is the screen I was using originally with OpenHD so in the back of this I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 this is a regular one and you can see we've got um, Ethernet, we've got four USB connectors, we've got twin HDMIs, these are the GPO pins and I've got like a fan plugged into that. We've got a connector there for the screen. This is the Compute Module 4, it's absolutely tiny and you see it's got none of those connectors whatsoever. So without yet yeah, another board, this is kind of useless. This, this is why uh, this wasn't my first port of call. It's, it's small, and uh, very compact, but it's much more sort of specialized for connecting things up. So here's the stuff that Flavio sent me in. Hey, he sent me a fridge magnet, thanks for that. I'll just pop that there as a little bit of product placement. But this is his main board here. And this is the one that connects via these connectors. You see how they just go on to the, the main board. And then it's got connectors around the top here. It's got USB connectors. So we take um, one of these sort of micro whatever connectors out to there. We got the ITC1, SPI, camera connector, voltage in. We do have a, a USB-C here. These two ports on the side here, which are labeled US01, I'm guessing that's where I'm gonna find my UART pins that I need to use for OpenHD. Although to figure that out, we've got the instructions and within that, We've got a handy board layout which talks about the UARTs there, which is exactly what I need. You'll also notice that the DC power supply coming in here can go from 7.5 to 28 volts, which means that you can be pushing this for a regular battery. So 2S to 6S as it says there. So there are another two boards that go with this one. The idea of this one was kind of a, a mounting board, either from the bottom or the top. We kind of end up with this big stack, kind of like this. Now it's undecided which way up I'm going. So you can see there we'd potentially go like that and then we've got this board here, which as you can guess, would mount our flight controller on top. So we end up with a big old stack there. Now Flavio said one thing, he, he, he said he, he meant to give me these captive nuts that should go in here to screw through, which he forgot, but he actually recommends not using that and using a heatsink board instead now which I've gone ahead and bought one here. And what you get there is a couple of bits of thermal paste, which would screw those down there. Now on his one, he ended up with this being on the bottom and sticking out the bottom of his plane and his stack going upwards. Obviously as heat rises, it'd be nice to do it around this way, but it just kind of depends how things will fit in and stuff. But these are the bits we're looking at. These parts are Flavio's design. Uh, these are things you'll need. And he was also kind enough to send me some USB connectors. These are very similar to the ones I've used before actually. Uh, I've got one here, this is my Raspberry Pi Zero and I've used one of these directly soldering off the board, which I prefer not to do if possible. So again, this is a pretty easy to get component from eBay, places like that. And he was also kind enough to send me a load of connectors to 
plug into his board so I can make up all the necessary cables I need to connect things up. Obviously one of the things we'll have to go with this is going to be a flight controller to talk to the, the Pi in some way. You'll also notice that the Pi has no SD card slot. This has got onboard memory that you have to uh, flash directly to the Pi. Quite how you do that at the moment, I don't know, I'll find out. At this point of the story I'm still waiting for two bits, a plane to come over that I want to fit this in. Uh, and when I've got that I'm going to decide how it's going to fit together and then I'm going to get the flight controller. So what I want to do is, is at least show you the plane and how I think it's going to fit in and then I'll get whatever flight control I'm going to get in order. Probably one of the Matex wing controllers for, for what I'm getting but uh, let's get the plane here and let's put it together in some way to show you how I think it's going to fit. It's here. What we're looking at here is a brand new but old because it's not made anymore. The company doesn't exist. This is a Flying Winds Falcon Evo kit and was very kindly sent over by my old friend Richard who uh, had one kicking around for ages which he wasn't going to build so he sent it over to me. This is significant because this is what we're going to put the ocean in. Let me show you exactly where it's going to fit. So what we're looking at here is the canopy section of the Evo. If I just bring one of the wings in that will basically attach like that. That will go on the other side and it's about a meter wingspan. So the idea of the central part is we've got a battery bay here, we can put cameras somewhere here, and then we've got this section here for the electronics with the motor mount going on the end here. Now what I did, I built up the little Ochin um, very roughly, this isn't uh, sorted, I'm still missing a spacer and I haven't put the um, heat sink on properly. Also this isn't going to be the flight control I use, this is just one that was kicking about. I just wanted to put it together to check the depth and how I was going to arrange it. And you can see there that depth wise, because it's not small, that's going to have plenty of room. Even if we slightly lift it up a bit, it kind of depends which way up it's going to go. That's going to fit in there. And you know, we should have enough space to put an ESC or anything else we need uh, in the other position if we don't want to put it externally. The question of how we get air in there is an interesting one. The canopy section will have this top which will stick from this end, pivot up and you've got Velcro there. So there's not much airflow necessarily coming in there. Underneath, ordinarily, we'd have this bit of Corex foam as a sort of skid plate. Um, so it'd be a good and interesting question about is this enough active cooling for this without any sort of air intakes. Obviously we could cut a hole there if we wanted to do some sort of scoops to cool it down. I noticed when Flavio built his he ended up putting his upside down and cutting a hole in the bottom of his plane to help dissipate the heat. I don't want to do that if I don't have to so we'll have to kind of see how that goes. But yeah so the next thing I have to do aside from build the plane uh, there's a, a bit of gluing and laminating and stuff. I need to order uh, an F405 wing controller I think. Seem to be a bit scarce on the ground though those wing controllers but I'll, I'll try and grab hold of one. And then I'm gonna get this flashed with OpenHD, put it together. I'm a little bit worried about um, the OpenHD camera because it's got a kind of weird ribbon cable how it's gonna quite get there but I guess we'll figure that bit out when we get there. But anyway that's this video for now. I'll be back next time to show you exactly how I flash this, how I put this in the plane and uh, hopefully at that point we'll get to try and fly it and see what happens. In the meantime, as mentioned, if you want to contact Flavio about getting one of these boards, you can join his potential list for a group buy. I'll put some contact details in the description down below. Uh, of course, I'll also have the GitHub reference for where you can check it out. And I'll include his videos because he's already obviously built one of these. He put something together and flew it and you can watch that with the links down below. But for now, I hope that's been helpful and I'll catch you in the next one when we'll put this together and try and fly it. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.